Good morning, guys. Um, so as you can see from the slides today, you have tons of blanks to fill out. Um, so today we'll mostly work on stuff on the blackboard. Okay, we were going to use um, the operators we learned for relational algebra to work on some queries, some examples. Let me make sure I don't understand that. So before we get started, I just want to quickly review the operators we have learned so far. Um, I'll ask you a couple of questions and you can answer me which operators would do that and these operators would do what. Alright? So these are the um, nine operators we have learned so far. I think I didn't miss any. Uh, so the first one is selection. We use sigma to denote that, right? So what does selection do? Mm -hmm. So like the rows based on criteria, right? So for selection, you will actually put a condition on that and then select the row that satisfies such condition. Um, for selection, isn't it unary or binary? Unary. So you take in one relation and you output one relation. How about the schema? Schema for input and output, are they the same? Yeah, right? Okay, so that's for selection. Based on criteria, we said select the rows satisfy the criteria. Normally for the criteria, we denote it in the subscript of the sigma, right? Second one is projection. Projection, we use pi to denote that. Um, what does projection do? Mm -hmm. Remove the unwanted columns, okay? So when we look at selection and projection, selection works on the horizontal direction, okay? We select the rows. But for projection, we select the columns. So for a projection, um, what do you put in the subscript of pi? The column you want to keep, that you want to keep, okay? So in the subscript of pi, you put just list the columns that you want to keep. Um, is projection unary or binary? Unary. Unary. And um, input and output, do they keep the same schema for projection? No, it will change. Okay. So that's selection and projection. Um, union. What does union do when we have R taking union with S? The result um, relation is going to include rows that. Yeah. Both or either? Is it both or either? Yeah, either, right? So how about intersection? That'll be both. Okay. Yeah, so for union, uh, you will include the ones that are in R and S or in either. And for intersection, the only um, the one both. Okay. So for union intersection, we say R and S, if they're taking union or taking intersection, we say they have to be what? Union compatible. Mm -hmm. Union compatible. And what do you mean by union compatible? They should have the same field. Same field, so which is same schema. Okay. So for union and intersection, they are binary and not unary. And also the input and output should have same schema, correct? So up until here, the, the first four, they all have same schema for input and output. How about set difference? What does set difference mean? When we take R, taking set difference with S? Yeah. Everything in R is not enough. Yeah, so the result tuples will be the tuples in R but not in S, right? So for set difference as well, we will get, um, same schema for input and output, okay? And also, um, the two relations involved into set difference have to be union compatible as well, okay? The fifth one is cross product. What does cross product do? So if we take R cross product with S, we get all of the field from R, all the fields from S, and the rows are basically just all the possible combinations from both tables. So we talked about the cardinality and degree before. Okay? So what's the cardinality of the result? Number of both. Mm -hmm. Number of both. Product of both. And the degree? 
some, some of both. Okay? So degree is the number of fields, and we say for crest product, the de result degree is going to be the sum of the two inputs. Okay? And also we talk about the cardinality, which is the number of rows, which is going to be the product of two tables, number of rows. Okay, so that's until here. And for crest product, will the schema stay the same? No. And do those two relations involved in cross product have to be union compatible? No. They can be totally different schema and just put them all together. Okay. And cross product is binary. Okay. Join. So we talked about join last Wednesday. Join can be into a combination of which two uh, or which three operators. You first take a cross product. Okay, then you will take a selection. Optionally, we will have selection, right? So, uh, how many joins do we have? Like we talked about three types of joins. Condition join, where we give and condition, okay? And another one is equijoin where the condition is special case, just equivalence. Third one is natural join, right? where we don't specify any condition, so we just simply compare all the fields with the same name in two tables. How about the second one, renaming? What do we do with that? Why do we need renaming? Because we will face a problem. Conflict. Naming conflict, okay? So we use renaming to rename um, not only just the result of relational algebra expression, also rename the fields because sometimes the field, result fields will have naming conflict. So we rename the fields. So that's for renaming. And the very last one is division. If we take R divided by S, what does the result mean? Remember last time I kind of made mistakes and um, say we have a bar with two fields as x and y, and table s with only the field y. So if we take r over s with the division operator, what is the result? So the result of for every x tuple is going to be a corresponding uh, y tuple and b with an x y tuple. More intuitively, that would be we want to find the x that involve all the y's in s. Okay. So that's that. So these are the operators we have learned so far. And division is also um, binary. And also, as you just saw earlier, for division, does the two relations have to be union compatible? Do they have to have same schema? Yes or no? No, no right? They don't have to have the same schema. OK. Um, before we get into the queries practices, I'll just really quickly show this, the part I messed up last time, just to make sure you guys understand where this is from. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm basically just putting to remind myself to tell you guys. Last time I kind of messed up, so. <laughs> okay, remember to figure that out. If any question, ask me. Maybe the office are at the pod. So, we talked about so many operators, so operators for sure will have precedence, okay? So, in relation to algebra, we take um, selection, projection, and renaming as the highest priority. And then we will take cross product, joint, and division. Later on, intersection, the last one, union, and set difference. So these are just the conventions that people use when you are missing some parentheses and will cause confusion. But in general, I would just um, try to do by using parentheses, which I think is the easiest way. So, um, before we get into the queries of today, we have 10. They're all from the textbooks. 
Um, so I want to work through all of these queries by using relational algebra, referencing to the example right here. And we have two options to do it today. I want you guys to pick. The first one is, I'll just talk about all of them, all 10. Okay, and you learn, or you raise your hands and tell me what you think, as we normally do. The second one is, I'll show you the question, you think about it, if you want to come up and try it, you can do that, and whoever solves it right, get one point in the total, total group. Sounds tempting, or you think that's kind of annoying? <laughs> what do you guys think? And if you try it, but you didn't get it, I still give you half point. And you get it for the one question you cannot get the second. What do you guys think? Want to try it or just want me to do it? Okay. If you want to try it, to come up and try it out, you think that's a better option? Raise your hand. Okay, we got two votes. Um, want me to do it? Okay. Got it. Um, all right, so this will be the example that we were. I was really looking forward to it. Okay, I'll do it all. Um, so you can just refer back to the table we had, um, and I'll quickly write down the schema right here. So in general, when we are writing the relation algebra, we just have to uh, refer to the schema itself. Uh, we don't have to worry too much about the instance, like the contents in the table. But there are parts that we want to look at why we cannot do that or whatever by looking at the contents. Um, so for this schema, I'll just write the field name. I won't write the domain because we don't really need that. This time. So I'll just omit that. And uh, normally for a schema, we want to denote who is the key. We will try to underline, right? So SID is the key. So the, for the first one, we want to find the name of sellers who have reserved vote number one or three. Okay, you can try to write down what you think, and we'll work on this together. All right, any thoughts of how we should start? Division. Division? Do we have to do division in this one? Division normally would be like sailors who have reserved all of the votes. If we just want to get the votes with ID 103. Okay, let's focus on what we should do to get vote with ID number 103. Yeah. Selection one could be equal to 103. Yeah. Oh, yeah, just to. Um, so today is a bit different. I'll follow the, the way the textbook says it. So even though we put the instances like B, B2, B1, right? Uh, textbook just put the, the whole name of it. So we'll do that for today. Okay. 
Okay, so say we want to focus on just getting votes with ID 103, so we do selection on votes with this um, condition. Okay, so they return the rows with votes with ID 103. What next? Yeah. It is. Um, we just need the name of the scalars, right? Mm-hmm. So people are saying, is it necessary to use the both? <laughs> no. We can just use reserves because reserves also. Yeah. So up until here, um, the schema of this will be, we have FID, EID, and the hey, right? Hmm? Projection of all? Oh, if you don't do any projection, then it returns the original schema. Now we can do projection. Oh yeah, now we can do projection. So what do you want to do? Projection and then selection from the equal to this projection. So, <laughs> projection and take which fields? SID. 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 Okay, so up until here, this whole thing, now we only have SID left. But our final goal is to get the names of the sellers who have reserved the boat, and now we actually get the ID of the sellers who have reserved the boat. So, we should do what? How can we associate this? How can we associate two relations? Now we have the SID, we want to use this to get the S name in sailors, right? Selection, SID of sailors is equal to this. Selection. Selection of SID. Yes. So remember in the very first lecture we talked about um, relation of algebra, we would just take a cross product with the sailors, and then we go all the way back and select where the SIDs match. But last time we introduced in concept that can replace these two steps into one step. Join. So, if we do a natural join right here, what it's going to do is to replace the concept of here, the whole thing. We take the cross product with sailors, and then we take out the rows that match SIDs. Why don't we have to put where the SIDs are the same? Because this is a natural join, so you will automatically find the fields with the same name. Right? So this step replace cross product, then um, selection. Make sense? So up until here, this whole part, what do you think will be the schema for that? SID will be there for sure, right? S name. So, right here I write one SID. That's from there. And sailors also have SID. Do you think we should have two copies of SIDs or one? No, right? So, when we are doing joints, we will actually add natural joints, we'll actually keep just one copy of the fields that it does the comparison. Remember? But if we do cross product, we keep both. Okay. So in this one, if we just keep the SID, we just equal to 103. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, because no, we no. all, oh, is it? No, 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 BID. SID? I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, corresponding SIDs. We'll just keep mm. those, right? Yes. Yeah. This is a kind of the output. We just need the projection of the name. Yeah, now, last step, projection of the name.
One more down. So that's the first one, which is supposed to be the easiest one. Okay. Um, I want to just quickly show you how we can decompose the whole thing by using renaming so it looks a bit clearer there's a substructure of it um, so first thing we can try doing renaming this will be the exact same thing yeah so in this case you, you return an SID for the left or side of operation mm -hmm. and when you do the join does that automatically kind of eliminate the duplicates of the SID then? yeah it's like two set of this SID but just the Oh, every time when it gets here, they already have no duplicates. I mean, like, you have an SID from this part of operation. Each one in the table with that, it's not an SID exists. Mm. Do you have a two? Um, two SID? Yes. No, no, no. Because uh, for natural, natural joint, it, it only keeps one copy of the column. Okay, so the operation of the package is limited. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, that's by definition. Sure. All right. So let's do a renaming to kind of decompose the whole part. Let's say we want to look at the first part. We just very simply name them Tim 1, Tim 1. Okay, so you can do here where the BID is equal to 103. Okay, so this is just basically we do this part first and we store them. That's tip one, right? Then what you can do, secondly, we can do the parts that are in the outer parenthesis. So we can do, say, okay, I want to just store them in temp two, where I take temp one, joining the sellers. Take the projection here. Okay, so here's if we take the second step. So then the whole part from here all the way to here, we call it temp two. Okay, and finally, we just simply do its name. So the both, uh, left side and right side is equivalent. Just we use the renaming operator to decompose it, to make it a bit clearer. Okay. So that will be for question one. Any questions so far? If you take like if you could have taken a normal uh, data space here, so how do we correspond to the size that kind of Two arguments have the same name, S I D S I D. Where which part are you referring to? The left one. Like if you okay. join if you would have simply taken the cross product and both of them would have like S I D and S I D. Mm-hmm. Like two S I D's in one table. Like down. Oh yeah. Mm. So you're saying how do they know from No, no. Not you that. Have the join, just the cross product oh yeah. Know. So oh, if we take the normal cross product, remember we would take the cross product first and it generate like a really big tables. And after, <coughs> right after that, we do a selection, selection by saying. Reserve your best ID to go to students or to take any. Oh, yeah. So for if we do a cross product here, let's say we do a cross product here, uh, replace this with cross product, okay? So the schema we will get is actually SID, and then another one is also SID. So this is where we have the naming conflict, so we can just assume if we know. Okay, so if we, this is SID1, SID2, and S name, and so on. So that's the result schema if we take cross product. And to make sure that this match, so we would just say, and we do a selection where SID1 equals to SID2. So how do we write that, like, both your SID, results your SID, they correspond to the table name from the SID? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll put the table name. Okay, let's move on to this 
second one. While I'm erasing it, you can think about it. Find the names of sellers who have reserved a red book. Okay, what's the first step you want to do? Selection with the RS to the web. Selection with the Yeah. So you do here where the color is red on both. Okay. First step we got the both that we were sure colors are red. Mm-hmm. What next? Join the reserves. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Join the reserves. And reserves have SIDs, but does it have name? No. Sailors. Yeah. And then? Our final goal is to find the names of sellers. So, okay. So this is correct, but is it the most opti optimized? Like in in the middle of it, we would generate tables. Do you think by doing something we can generate smaller tables? Yeah. You would have to select the bid ID from right. the bids and you'd write the SIO. Because there's yeah. always no BID in the same table. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so if you do a selection of color blue, red, and votes, you get a scheme of BID being any color. But mm -hmm. you just join that with a sale. We joined it with reserves. Oh, okay. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what we can do is, uh, as Kelly said, we do. Selection, oh no, projection on BID right here. <coughs> All right, so this will actually take out the unnecessary information, so we generate just a smaller table. Okay, but both are correct. Okay. okay. So I think this is this one is pretty straightforward, so I won't do the renaming. Okay, two. Query three. Find the colors of boats reserved by lover. Is it called lover? Yeah. What should we do? Selection of lover and then sales. You want to select lover first. On um, which table? Sellers. Sellers. So we select the seller's name who is called Clover first. Crazier. 
you will get the ID and the day. Right? So let's not think about optimizing it yet. Um, then, joining in with both, get even bigger. Um, now we have color, uh, in name and color. So color is what we want. And it's right there. Projection on color. Make sense? So even though in the middle of it we create tons of tuples and the degree is really high, still the correct one. And from this one, you know, by doing what we can make it more op optimized, right? We can just take, for example, until here, take out the SID, right? Or after until there, we only take out the ID. Yeah. In the middle of the operation, where's all the tuples being stored at? It doesn't matter if I kind of create a two notion. It won't be stored into database. Right, okay, mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter if you're actually operating in a database, which. Oh, um, which kind of so this is just telling you what will be more optimized, what will be not. But actually, when you really write <coughs> SQL commands, remember when we learned very, very beginning of the chapter one, we have a query optimizer. So this is what the query optimizer is doing. It will. Um, Convert the query into a more optimized one. Okay. Yeah. 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 And we should be. Um, okay, so that's for query three. So far, so good. We have seven left. <laughs> Just think about the fourth one. What do you think? Find the names of sellers who have reserved at least one vote. Can you do the selection? Because reserves and sellers. Selection and then? This sounds tricky, but actually it's super easy. Can you do intersection? <laughs> so, uh, before we write that down, can you do intersection between sellers and reserves? No, because they are not mm -hmm, not union compatible. Different schemas can't do intersection. So, awesome! You guys just figure that out. We just take join between sellers. And reserves. So this will be an empty step if none of the sellers have ever made any reservation. Okay? But this will re return you with something. Um, and then we want to find the name, so protection. You all got that? Because they want to write query five at the same spot. So that's for query four. If you want to find um, names of sellers who are reserved at least one vote, take join between sellers and reserves. Then because we want just the S name, take rejection. Okay, that's for query four. Let's work on query five. Query five is very similar. Query 6, I want to do a comparison. If you read Query 5, we want to find the names of sellers who have reserved a red or green boat. Okay. So when we think about or, what kind of concept that we have learned so far do you think will work? There are two. Union. Yeah. First one is union. How about second one? You say, okay, we take union as the first approach. Second one. Remember when we do selection, in the condition we can do and or. Okay. 
So let's just say we want to do the or. We'll do it later. Okay, so that's another way. So we can try, let me see. Which one do you guys want to work on first? This one? This one? Second one. <laughs> Second one first, okay? Um, so let's start from having or in the condition first. Okay. How would you do that? Start from the boats. Say we want to get the boats that are either red or green. So you would do boats selection. Uh, too close. Okay. Boats. Do a selection. So color equals to red or color. Right? So you by using this or right there in the condition, we combine two Boolean terms and we get the both that are either red or green. Right? That's the first step. Then very easy. We want to get the names of sellers who have reserved. So we want to involve the other two tables. So we join reserves first. And what is the information of sellers we want? Names. Names. So we do projection. That's that. Okay, first, um, second approach we did. So that's by using the or. And then we want to think about how we can use the union. Do some renaming this time so it's a bit clearer. Let's say we want to say some just tent boats that are either green or red. How would you do it by using union? Mm, yeah. So you can do Selection on color that are red on the boats. That's the first part. Take a union on the color. Okay, so we do this part first. We take a union of that and name it take the boat. Then the second step should be exact same as what we just did. So what will the second step be? Just take join our reserves and stay with us. Okay. So second step, we just directly t uh, take what we have created and rename. Take joins on reserves and sell us. And because we only care about Taylor's name, do projection. Okay, so that's for the first approach. I want to use union. Okay, so that's the difference between these two. Any questions so far for finding red or green folks? <coughs> Right. Mm. So you just to rename. Actually, we can just put the whole thing right here, but I think it'll be a little too long. So I just rename. Rename is always optional. Yeah. Question there. No? Okay. So that's for query five. Now let's quickly change the um, the query into find the names of sellers who have reserved a red and a green bow. So that would be your query six. How would you change based on those? Let's say we start from changing approach two. Mm -hmm. 
So from the last one, would we be evaluated for like the efficiency of those? Because I don't think that like that is the same. We're just like that we need to understand like, oh. two different ways to do it. Because like in the real world, it might matter if it's like a massive database and stuff. Oh, I think. Are, are they exactly the same? Or not? I think the evaluation would be different. For the first one, you will actually have to generate two separate tables, and then you take a union of them. But for this one, when it only gets to this part, it actually goes through every row and just check is the color red or green, red or green. So it will only get one table. So that's second one would be preferred. Yeah, yeah. But it won't be all the case when we do different things if we do n. Okay, so let's think about query six. If we want to find the names of sellers who have reserved a red and a green vote, let's say, can we directly fix it from approach two? Is it kind of tempting to just change this to N? Well, you know it's wrong. <laughs> Why is it wrong? Why can't we just change that? Yeah, because one vote cannot be red and green at the same time. So, when we want to do query six, where we find a vote that, um, a sailor who have reserved a red vote and a green vote, we shouldn't just directly change here to N. Okay, so let's give up here, the second approach first, and try to do the first one. Since we are doing N, we want to change union into intersection. Okay, now again, if you look at that, what do you think? Directly change it? No. Or not? <coughs> Why not? Let me see. Um, so people are saying we cannot just directly change it to intersection. Okay, let's see why we cannot do that. Um, I'll quickly write it here. Okay. So for selection on both, mm -hmm. um, and the, um, the result we will get is actually BID, BNAME, uh, that's the first table, right? What's the BID of it? One of three. What's the name of it? Is it like interlace or something? No? What's the name of the red bow? That's the one two one four. Red one. There are two. Oh, there are two red bows? Yes. Okay, what's the name of them? Get query six 
by directly changing the union inter intersection, you cannot do that. So, what will make you able to do that then? Two separate intersections. Put them separate. So, select the cell of the two of the red. This will be same. The one with the red and then the Yes, so what we can do is actually right here, we want to associate somehow with the cellular information first. Then we can actually take the intersection on the cellular information. That's exactly what we want, right? Okay? So how do we do it to make it associate with cellular information? Join with who? What? Which, which one? <laughs> with who? Yeah, with resource. Same here. It goes. Um, sorry, it's getting messy. Here. Anyway, um, okay. If we do them separately first, and then what? After here, we actually get the SID. All right. Can we intersection right away? Yeah, we should project SID first. Why is that? Because here are some of the fields that will actually be for sure different. Here. Because right now, the field we have is BID, email, color, SID, and day. And it doesn't matter what, right here, it's all going to be red. Okay? On the left side. And here, for the color path, it's all going to be green. So if you take an intersection, it's still empty set. Correct? So in order to prevent this from happening, we actually do projection of SID on both of these. go, I do want to quickly say one thing. Mm, so here we project SID, right? Why don't we just project S name? Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Because it is unique. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Because it's not guaranteed as name will not uh, not have duplicates. So you might get the wrong. There's no there's no What? There's no What? Oh, okay. <laughs> you guys are right. Bad question. Whatever. Just make sure we, we project the, the keys. Okay. Yeah, we'll work on the four the, the four next time. Okay? Um and don't forget the midterm is next Tuesday in the evening. Um I won't have review question, like review exam, practice exam, because I'm not creative enough to create two copies of midterms. But we will have a review session next Monday. Okay, so lectures, lectures that will be um, covered in midterm one will be finished this Friday, right? Um, and also, don't forget you will be turning in your homework to this Friday. Yeah. What? In class. Yeah. So start reviewing, all right? So midterm one is from chapter one to chapter four.